everyone. Welcome to the Boardroom Brain podcast today. You are going to love the guest that we have on. I cannot wait to introduce you to him. So let's dive in. Miles Hunter is the CEO and co-founder of TutorMe. He and his co-founder struggled to find an effective tutoring option provided by his alma mater, the University of Southern California. So they set out to create a solution. He quickly acquired product management and web design skills for product development prior to TutorMe's launch. Now as CEO, Miles is responsible for business development, strategy, and building an incredible team. Before launching TutorMe, Miles was a consultant at Ernst & Young and served clients in financial services. As an undergraduate student, he pioneered the modern ambassador program model at Lyft. He recruited and managed thousands of Lyft ambassadors across the country, creating and deploying effective growth hacks. His efforts were a driving force in Lyft's success with referral and ambassador marketing. Miles is a graduate of the University of Southern California with a BS in business administration and a minor in real estate finance. He's also fluent in Spanish. So with that, Miles, welcome to the show. So glad to have you on today. Thank you, Dr. Kirk. Thank you. Oh, well, we have got a lot to talk about. I know our listeners are going to be so excited to learn from you today because you've done a lot since you've graduated from USC. And let's dive in with just talking about TutorMe to get started. So much of learning, especially in the last few years, have moved online. And, you know, with TutorMe, you're providing 24-hour tutoring support to, I read, over a million students. So tell us more about what TutorMe does and how people can access these resources. Sure. So at TutorMe, we partner directly with school districts, universities, community colleges, so that they can ultimately provide the tutoring to their students at no cost. So the students would be able to come on 24-7 and 300 plus subjects. Uh, and then that's completely unlimited. So that we work with districts in a way where the school, the district pays for a flat license fee for each student. And then all students at that district would ultimately be able to get tutoring unlimited. Wow. So this is something that's accessible to every student, that they're not having to pay for the services. That's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. So we really want to make, so what we call them is equity plan. So that the students, no matter where they come from or who their parents are, um, they get unlimited access to one-on-one -on -one support. And that's all done through audio and video. Um, so they're able to just do a real-time support um, with, that, with that tutor. Uh, and that's obviously all done synchronously one-to-one. Uh, -one. So there isn't one tutor working with multiple students at once. Wow. I think you're going to be seeing people log on as they're listening to this. And I was looking too at the website. There are so many subjects offered. I mean, there were some where I'm like, I wanted to get tutored by somebody on financial management or all the different, I mean, you have a wealth of topics that you cover. Yeah, plenty of topics. And we keep adding more and more as time goes on. Um, and, and thanks to our our 15,000 plus tutors were really happy able to have good coverage on this. Yeah, I, I can tell. Now, something I'm curious about as a psychologist, I'm really passionate, obviously, about mental health of employees, of students. There's no doubt in the last two years, people's mental health has really struggled. And, and I think, you know, students especially, it's, it's interesting, right? The data shows 90% of college students reported their mental health worsened during the pandemic. And sometimes this can really be linked to academics, right? If you're struggling in class, this affects your confidence. This can induce feelings of anxiety and depression. I'm curious, have you seen Tutor Me at all make a shift in students' mental health? So we've seen that when it comes to tutoring, a lot of things go beyond academic support. Um, oftentimes, especially at the lower grade levels, um, you ultimately see a tutor um, that's that's just might be the only champion in that, that student's life um, where they're, uh, making sure that they're uh, they're not only just doing their homework as a parent would, um, but giving them the confidence that they can actually do it. Um, so we see that um, in, in lessons each and every day um, where a tutor uh, is there as a support system. That's why a lot of the students are working with that same tutor often. Um, and there's a lot of students that just don't have the confidence, even prior to the pandemic, in a classroom um, where they're amongst their peers to raise their hand and say, I don't understand this, or, or to wait after class, if they have the fortitude to wait after class and they don't have a part-time job right after class, um, to, to, to talk with a teacher and say, hey, I don't understand this. Um, when, you, when you start to really like create that, uh, really break down that physical barrier and uh, allow students and tutors to talk in a digital format, which most students are more, more accustomed to anyway, um, they're more likely to actually reach out for help and say that, you know what, I don't really understand this. Um, and, and sometimes even when you do reach out for help, uh, and then you're maybe told the, uh, how to do something in a few different ways, you might just say, yeah, you understand it and nod your head just because, 
uh, you don't want to continue to say you don't understand it. Um, and that's something that we see that just a lot more natural in a digital environment. Um, students aren't afraid to say, hey, I'm, I'm lost. Oh, that's, that's really cool to hear that that's something that's come out of it being so digital, is it sounds like there's more opportunities for students to be able to share yeah, it's still not clicking for me. And I'm, I'm imagining too, that really in, increases students' resilience as well to feel like, okay, I don't wanna just give up. They're learning, they can access support and they can continue to go the long run. Absolutely, especially that they know that some their parents aren't paying for it or they're directly paying for it. Um, they know that they can spend the time that they need to actually figure out what they're working on and, and their, their friends aren't gonna, aren't gonna see that they're asking for help. Uh, so that's, that's always nice. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. Well, and I'm curious too, let's talk about you because here you, you've started this whole company. I know you co-founded it, which is incredible. And, you know, people talk about Instagram stalking with this podcast. I like to do a little bit of LinkedIn stalking. And I was looking at the, you have a wealth of reviews and endorsements from people who have worked with you. I don't know if you've read them, but they're quite glowing. People say that you are an exceptional leader. I'm curious to hear more about, you know, how you've been able to start Tutor Me, you know, got the idea to do it, been able to sustain this. This is a, a big deal for, you know, somebody graduated college and just started this. Yeah, so after uh, USC, I only worked in, in a, a normal job, I guess, uh, for about eight months um, before we, we raised money for Tutor Me. Um, so there isn't really a whole lot that can prepare you for becoming a, a leader of any sort. Um, and, and no matter how many podcasts or, or books you read, I feel that um, a lot of times, um, you know, you learn as you go. And so I, I wouldn't consider myself a, a great leader um, by any means, but I would say that um, one that's definitely evolving. Um, and it certainly helps to have a brilliant team behind you. Um, so it definitely makes you look very good. <laughs> well, let's talk about how you are bringing wellness to your team, because something I really care about is not just how we're helping the people we serve, right? The people who experience Tutor Me services. Also, how are we bringing wellness to our internal team? So I'm curious, how do you integrate wellness, mental health into your team dynamic? So we, we offer a wealth of um, resources to, to our employees um, to make sure that um, they have what they need, especially in times like this. Um, but ultimately, from a work-life balance perspective, um, we really started off as a, as a remote company. And there's, there's a lot of companies now that um, are hybrid or fully remote. Um, and, and some of them, most of them actually were, did that because they were kind of backed into a corner and, and when, it, when it came to COVID and they had to, to ultimately um, provide this kind of better work-life balance. Um, whereas from the very beginning of Tutor Me, um, actually at the core of what we do is really remote learning. So we have always really embraced that remote culture. And I think that um, folks really appreciate that, that we're not, we're not saying that, you know, you're going to be remote for the next six months. Um, it truly is indefinite. Um, and so we really value that, that time that might be on the road commuting is spent like with your actual child, spent with your family. Um, so I feel like that's a really big thing and um, allowing, giving back all that time uh, to employees, I think is, is well received. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, you had good timing on that front. You know, the fact that you were already thinking it was going to be something remote. I think we're seeing so many people having more opportunities to have some flexibility with their work schedule it makes a big impact in people's mental health. So I love that you're meeting people where they're at with that. Let's talk about you, you know, starting this this company. I mean, how did you get the courage to do that? Because a lot of people may be listening to this podcast today and saying, I'd love to start my own company. I have no idea where to begin. Maybe I don't feel like I have the courage to begin. How are you able to get the courage to do this? Um, so I say, I, I would say that it would definitely, looking back at my younger years, I, I wouldn't have ever imagined that I would have been in education space. Um, so K, K through 12 was, was really a struggle for me. Um, mm -hmm. I really struggled with ADHD. I couldn't focus in classrooms. Um, my parents couldn't afford tutoring. Um, so it kind of left me at a, in a situation where I was ultimately um, not, not the best student in school. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think that what really helped was um, I realized that my grades weren't the sharpest. Uh, and I, I realized that the SAT score was really, really was going to get me um, to a good college. Mm -hmm. um, so I decided to, to get a part-time job um, for the sole purpose in sophomore year to be able to pay for my own um, private tutoring. Um, and that ultimately paid off. I got into USC and um, I realized how effective tutoring and how, how much one-on-one -on -one academic support in general 
um, can ultimately change the course of your life. Um, so I think that um, looking back on it, I never really felt that I was going to be uh, in education given the, the, the K-12 history that I had. Um, but when I was at SC, I really realized that, um, you know, learning in general is something I think that is, is really evenly distributed um, amongst everyone, the desire to learn rather, mm-hmm. um, but the access to it is not. So I, we, we realized that we wanted to provide a tutoring option that wasn't just convenient, um, that wasn't just, um, you know, a better product than the ones out there, but ultimately that would provide the tutoring at no cost to the student um, to make it truly equitable. Yeah. So um, the, the courage really lied in, in us thinking that we're, I mean, probably a little bit naivety. Like we were, we thought that we, we thought that we would be able to build this and it would be super fast. And it turned out to, it took a lot longer to raise money. It took even longer to actually build the product. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say that, um, you know, I think the courage lies in that I was probably the most unlikely person to, to build a tutoring company. Um, and those that knew me in middle school would probably attest to that. Um, so, so I think that it's, it's definitely certainly possible as, as long as you kind of just put your head down uh, and build something that provides value. And that's ultimately um, what we strove to do. Mm, I, I hear that. And what an incredible testimony in, in sharing your own experience with ADHD. I, I hear that, you know, oftentimes, right? We experience a problem ourselves and then we want to do something about it to solve that problem, even on a larger scale which I'm hearing is exactly what you did. What's kind of surprised you along the way in your business development, seeing Tutor Me come to fruition? Uh, what surprised you the most? I think what surprised us the most was how, how much demand there really what would be for K-12. Um, we started off in higher ed because it was the lowest common denominator. It was the nearest thing to us. We were in college at the time that we thought about building the company. So we thought, well, why don't we start with higher ed? Um, and ultimately what we discovered was, um, and it seems very obvious now, um, that there's a much bigger need for it in K-12. It's a much bigger market as well. Um, and so we see, um, we didn't realize how much third graders and, and second graders would benefit from something like this. So mm-hmm. I think that's what we realized along the way. Um, and our, our really conviction of that, that desire to learn is, is really truly evenly distributed um, has really been reaffirmed as time has gone on. We've, we've been doing this for seven years now um, and we've, we've collected a lot of data and a lot of surveys, a lot of feedback from students. And we truly do have come to the conclusion that um, we have come to the conclusion that students really do want to learn uh, even the ones that you really don't think they do. um, (laughs) They, they really do. um, But we just haven't made it in our educational system easy for that to happen. Um, We've created so many barriers. Um, So many students are not, don't have the fortitude to stick around after school and get tutoring. Um, And, and that's, that's something that we've realized that the majority of students um, do really, really want to learn. Um, And I would argue that all of them really do. And the, the issues that lie, the underlying issues are that a lot of students didn't even have access to to internet and computers. Um, A lot of people don't really know that, um, that, they're prior to the pandemic, about 60% of students had access to a computer and internet at home. Um, and that left out a huge number of students and the ones that probably need it the most. Um, and thankfully, um, due to all the funding of the pandemic, um, school districts have gone from 60% to 98% uh, in terms of one-to-one access to on internet and computers at home. That's fascinating. That's that's good to hear that the schools went into action to give students the resources they need. And the thing that I love hearing the most about it is that it sounds like you're giving students a real sense of loving to learn. You know, I think, I'm not sure your perspective on this, I'd be curious to hear, but I see a lot of students, it seems like, that are really motivated by these external rewards, right? Getting the grade or getting into the college, which not bad things, but sometimes I see students lose that intrinsic love of learning in the process um, because sometimes it's about getting that gold star. And it sounds like with Tutor Me, you're really helping students come back to just a pure love of learning and, and fostering a sense of curiosity because you're building out time to actually do that, I'm hearing. Absolutely. And especially in a time where students do, if they really want to, and they want to pay for it, they can have access to, to services that ultimately do the homework for them um, and, and, can, and can really um, allow them to, to, to violate academic dishonesty policies. Um, so it's really important that when we work with schools, um, we, are, we are honoring that and we're making sure that our tutors are not in any way giving answers. 
Um, and a lot of students um, do become frustrated um, that, the, that they, they don't, don't realize uh, early on when they first experienced Tutor Me that it's not someone that's there to just give you an answer. It's someone to help you, lead you to that answer. Um, but that's something that we've, uh, we've had challenges with, uh, making sure that, that students uh, aren't disgruntled by the, the, the fact that they're not receiving the answers as opposed to just not getting tutored. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a real parallel process there. You're giving people the skills to learn how to sit with that frustration. We've all been there before with like probably a tough math problem of like, what's the answer, right? But that also maps onto just life experiences too. You know, last time I checked, there's no roadmap for how to live life necessarily. So you're helping <laughs> exactly. get those skills to sit with the discomfort of that. One totally. question I have for you we rarely ever achieve these successes on our own. And I'm curious if you've had mentors or people who've helped you in the process. Uh, tell us a little bit about, about the people who've had your back. Um, you know, I, I think my mother has always believed in me, uh, no, matter, um, no matter where I've been in life and how much trouble I've gotten in school. Um, I, I believe that no matter how many times I had lunch in the principal's office in middle school, I, I think that she still, she still believed I was a good kid. Um, so I think that that's always helpful. Um, and I think beyond that, um, you know, the, the friends that I, that I met in high school and more importantly at, at uh, USC um, were, were pivotal um, to, to my drive and ambitions to do more. Um, I think that that was, that was massive. And I think a big part of college uh, isn't necessarily uh, what you learn, um, but it's, um, it's ultimately who you meet and, and, and what, what really motivates you in life. So I think that um, USC was a great place for that. Um, so I definitely give a lot of credit to the friends um, that I had there. And um, it just it just makes you, um, I think, just more competitive um, in, in terms of uh, what you want to achieve in life. So I think that um, that's super helpful. Yeah, exactly. We'll give a we'll give a go Trojan shout out there. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. All of this is, is so helpful to hear. And, you know, one thing I'm always interested, you know, here you, you've been accomplished these great things already in your life. You know, looking back and then how you integrate wellness day to day, what's maybe a secret to your success that maybe will now not be such a secret? Um, I would say that, I would say really just focusing, and this is something that continuing to evolve. Um, as, you, as you work in life, like in and outside of your career, um, I think that really focusing on giving um, value and giving more value than you receive is incredibly important. Um, so I think that it's one of those things where um, you don't want to give something transactionally to, to kind of expect something back. Um, but what I've learned is, and in, in implementing this over the years, is that um, when you do give more value um, than you receive, you ultimately um, will be better off. So I think that that's really important, um, not doing things just so that you expect something back immediately. There's the quote right there for the podcast episode. <laughs> so well said. And, you know, sometimes we have people listening to this podcast or watching since we're on YouTube as well, who may be sitting here wondering, okay, do I go for more the Ernst & Young? Do I go for more the corporate job, right? Or do I start my own business? Advice that you have for people who are maybe at that crossroads of trying to decide kind of the, the route they may want to take in their own life. I would say that. Um... You know, entrepreneurship isn't for everyone. Um, everyone has like their own journey in life and one isn't necessarily better than the other. Um, mm -hmm. But if you do have um, that entrepreneurial bug that's kind of itching you for, for a, a, a decent amount of time, um, mm -hmm. then that probably means that you should, you should go and, and, uh, and try it out. I think that, that that is a sign that you should um, fully, fully plunge into it and give it a try, especially the, the younger you are. Mm -hmm. um, because ultimately, I think that down the road, you may regret it if you don't do it. Mm, yeah, yeah. So, so true. We had a guest on the other day, Meha, fellow Trojan as well, and she started Silk and Sonder. And entrepreneur like yourself said something very similar of like, yeah, if I don't scratch that itch, you'll regret it, you know? And I think that's a big, big clue for people who are listening. Would you regret not turning that stone over, if you will, to see what could happen? Um, Absolutely. Let's talk about wellness in your own life. How do you incorporate self-care, wellness? What are some of the things that you do, Miles, to stay grounded day to day? Um, so I'm trying to do more meditation, but I'm not, 
I'm not very uh, committed to it. So to be honest, I, I think I can do a lot better in that space, um, uh, uh, quite literally. And so I think um, the the thing that I try to to focus on is is uh, really trying to to decompress and 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 turn off work, um, especially when you're working from home. Um, so I think that that's super important. Is there's always going to be exceptions to that, um, but ultimately trying to to set a, a divide between between work and 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 your life outside of work. Um, I think that's super important. People talk about it a lot and a lot of people struggle with it. I think the more, the more ambitious and the more, the more uh, energized you are about the, the work that you do, I think that it's, it's harder to unplug. Um, but when you end up doing it, you realize that the work that you do when you're plugged in is actually ends up being better. Mm. Oh, that speaks to me from even last night, right? I don't know if you ever get, get this, but sometimes I feel such a sense of guilt when I'm resting of like, I should be working more. And I try and remind myself, no, when you allow yourself to rest, it's also productive in a way you can come back to the work so much more clear headed. So I don't know if that comes up for you. as well. <laughs> no, Absolutely. I, I think like little things like when you're, when there's something that's not urgent and I'm, I'm, I'm messaging one of my colleagues on Slack um, I, I tend to uh, delay the message to be sent in the morning so that they don't they don't look at a Slack message at ten o'clock. I just thought about it at ten o'clock. It doesn't mean you have to respond to it. Um, and I don't want I don't want to uh, make anyone uh, have to have to get nervous or feel like they have to respond. So yeah. I think little things like that to make sure that you're also projecting that on other people. Yes, that drafts feature is a good tool to use. Um, <laughs> and last question I have for you: No pressure on this one. We ask all of our guests this. Miles, what do you hope your legacy is going to be? So I hope we can we can end up helping as many students as possible. Um, having a million students with access is great. Um, there's a lot more students in K-12 for sure. Uh, and then there's a ton in higher ed as well. Mm -hmm. I think that being able to provide every student, ultimately that's really what I want to, want to have as a legacy is that every student, whether it's with TutorMe or another platform, I think every student in K-12 growing up um, from the from kindergarten all the way through the end of college or the end of high school, they should have access. If they go to a public institution, they should have access to one-on-one -on -one academic support 24 seven, whenever they want it. Um, and I think that's going to happen really, really soon here. Um, that it's going to become a line item and all districts are going to be paying for it. Um, it's not going to be a matter of, should we provide something like this to students? Um, it will be something where, you know, which one are we going to use? So I'm super excited for that day. Um, that, that all students will have that. Um, because I think that's, that's when people talk about leveling the playing field from an educational perspective. Um, I don't know what could do a better job at that than, than providing everyone um, their own tutors. Mm. So inspirational. I really think as people listen to this podcast, hopefully, you know, people talk more about tutor me because we all know a student who could use that support. Everyone can, not just for people yeah. who are struggling, right? It's something we all can use. So what an incredible idea and how cool, how you have really brought it to fruition. I have a feeling we're going to just continue to hear more and more about Tutor Me. Well, thank uh, you so much. Miles, tell us more if people want to get in touch with you or find out more about Tutor Me. Tell us more how they can get in touch. Yeah, so um, you can just shoot me an email at miles at tutorme.com. Uh, and that's miles with a, with a Y. So okay. perfect. Yeah. And we'll include the, the links to tutor me and all of that good stuff so that people can get connected. Miles, what a joy to have you on the show today. I loved our conversation. I learned a lot. I know other people will as well. Thank you for just being a, such a game changer in the academic industry. We need it more than ever. Well, thank you. The feeling is certainly mutual. Take good care. Thank you.